This video is going to be covering the light and shadow section. The additive lighting down here is going to be covered in a different video because I'm assuming this video is going to already be pretty long. Alright, let's get started. Light and shadow is basically how you see curvature on your model. Without shadows, you have no curve, you have no anything. So for a lot of people, they kind of just want to turn the shadows off. But as you can see, you lose so much detail. And you basically can't even tell this is a curved object unless you just guess. So by adding light and shadow, you create more of a curvature and you get more shape to your model. So you'll see a lot of um, cartoons or anime or anything like that, anything tune related, will have basically two sets of shadows. You have the shadows that are drawn directly on to create form, and then you'll have shadows that sort of represent the light direction. In a lot of media, the light direction shadows are actually just not done at all, and you only have shadows that represent form. So you'll have like wrinkles and clothes that are shadowed or the edge of a face, but it doesn't really represent a light direction. It just kind of sort of follows it. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show is the natural and controlled lighting type. The rest will come afterwards. The natural lighting is basically what you're seeing right here with a fully dark shadow. So the shadow ramp is black and white you're getting sort of these gray shadows and they're actually tinted blue somewhat from the environment if i hit monochromatic you can see that it actually goes gray and without that it's blue the difference between natural and controlled is that natural is going to take environmental lighting into account for the shadow color and controlled is going to be more controlled it's exactly what you're putting in so the lighting ramp is black and white, and you'll see white and black. And if you lower the shadow strength, you're going to get sort of somewhere in between. You're just going to, it's going to like blend into the surface basically. So rather than being black, you're going to get like more white. If the surface was red, you'd get more red. So I'm going to switch this back to natural and move on to the next thing, which is just showing monochromatic lighting. So... That's all it really does. It converts the lighting to black and white, and that's it. <laughs> it's good if you want to keep your avatar looking a very specific way without messing with world lighting. So you'll enter worlds where the lighting is completely blue, for example, like I can do it here, and you're going to get a blue tint to your avatar. And that might not be what you want, so if you switch the lighting to monochromatic, you're going to get rid of that and you're going to stay the correct brightness, but be the colors that you want. Generally, I would leave that off, but in some cases, it's going to be useful. Next up, we have the lighting ramp. I talked about this a little earlier, but let's talk about how, what it actually does. So lighting has direction. So if I click this light, you can see the direction is sort of that way and I can turn it. So the light's coming in from the side, it's hitting here, and then it's sort of curving around it. So at the where the light hits is going to be the right side of the shadow ramp. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Where the light hits is going to be the right side of the shadow ramp, this part you see right here. So it's white, and then as it goes to the other side, it's going to hit red. So it's, it's basically curving around this. Here is white, and then the other side is red. And you can mess with that. You could move the white so it goes further. You get a sharper edge. You could add an entirely different color in there. And you have a lot of control over this. So say you wanted to get the, the classic tune look that sort of has like banded light. You could go and set the blend mode to fixed. You could set this color to like a mid gray. Go into this one, set this color to a to black, for example, and all of a sudden you have banded lighting. This is similar to what you would see in, I think Genshin Impact does this. And now you can too. Next up we have the Shadow Mask. 
So this is just going to mask where shadows can occur. Uh, we're using this texture. Let me move it onto the right monitor. We're using this texture. White is where the shadows are going to be allowed, and the blacker areas are going to be where shadows are not allowed to be. So you can see the black areas have no shadow, and the white areas have shadow. And it's not going to affect areas that don't have shadow. So this would be used for maybe you have a face and you want the shadows to be a little lighter on your face. It can look weird sometimes if you don't have shadows and you're in like a an entirely shadowed environment. But it has its uses and play with it and see if it works for you. Next up we have the shadow strength. So all this does, I talked about it a little bit earlier, it just sort of makes the shadows lighter and darker, blends them into the surface. Really more useful with controlled, I believe, because you get that full control over exactly how your shadows look. In natural, I usually leave my shadows pretty dark because it matches what they should look like. Like you see the shadow on the ground, this is sort of the same darkness. It makes you fit into the world. Next up we have Shadow Offset. So all this does is offset your shadow location. So this is useful if you have a shadow ramp you really like, but you kind of want to move it around without messing it up. You can just kind of offset that shadow. And it's just going to basically move the shadow ramp left and right, or make it sort of more in light or more dark. Not something I use very often, but it's there if you just, if you, I guess if you're lazy and don't want to set up your shadow ramp. Um, what else you see on this is the AO map. So you can see there's these yellow streaks, and then in shadow there's these dark colors. What ambient occlusion does is just occlude ambient light. So you can see here there's these black parts and white parts. The black parts are going to sort of block the lighting, and the white parts are not going to do anything. So you can see here we have a yellow light and like a blue background. The blue and yellow mixed together is making this bright white that you see. And if you completely block out the ambient lighting, which is this blue lighting from the scene, you're going to get yellow. So this is useful if you have sort of like um, smaller areas on your avatar that, you know, light's not going to hit. Like if you put your hands together, you can see they go dark in like the parts where they touch. That's what ambient occlusion does. It blocks sort of the ambient lighting from the environment from hitting your model. And in shadow, you get these blacks because shadows are lit by the ambient lighting. And if you're occluding all ambient lighting, you're just going to be black because there's no light touching it. Next up, we have the minimum brightness. So minimum brightness is just sort of a way to limit how dark your model can go by providing a minimum brightness that it can be. It looks kind of weird. I would suggest basically never using it. But if you want to go into scenes that are completely dark and show up a little bit, you can sort of set your minimum brightness to something small so your avatar is always visible. Um, Generally, you're supposed to be black in those environments, so you don't really want to use that. But this is an option for specific use cases that you may run into. There's also indirect contribution, which is sort of how much light, how much the indirect lighting is mixed with the direct lighting. By default, this is 0.2, and again, this is one of those things that you're probably never going to change. But if you want to be just lit by the direct light, you can move that to zero and have no indirect contribution, and only that direct light is going to light you up. You can move it all the way to one and only be lit by indirect lighting. But I'm not really sure why you want to do that. If you want to look pretty close to what standard looks like, I would suggest just setting this to 0.2. Don't use this to just make your model look brighter. It's going to look bad in most scenes. Next up is... Receive casted shadows. 
So by default, you're not going to receive a shadow. If I move this over here, you'll see that this ball is not casting a shadow on this. But if I move it here, you'll see that it is. And also the base down here has no shadow and here it does. This is sort of something you would expect to be on by default, but the reason it's not is because it looks really bad in some worlds. The world kind of dictates how a shadow looks and the resolution it's being like the resolution the shadow is. So you can see here, these shadows are all muddied. And if we turn the receive casted shadows off, you get a nice clean edge. But you turn them on and you get these weird edges. And that's just because of how shadows are rendered in Unity. There's not a lot you can do about that. So you kind of have to balance between do you want clean shadows that, you know, aren't being cast by other objects, or do you want to sort of mix your clean shadows with another object's shadows that may not be as clean. <clears throat> Detail shadows are sort of what I was talking about at the start of the video. They're shadows that show the volume or the, the curvature of a model. In this case, I'm, I have a sort of weird example, but let me just clear that off. And let me get a random noise. So this isn't going to really be perfect for what I'm showing, but it's going to get across what I mean. So detailed shadows can be used for, say, the um, the folds in cloth or something like that. They're, they're going to sort of blend into your normal shadows, dependent on your detail strength. If you set your detail strength to one, those those spots that are um, black are always going to be in shadow. But if you set it to, say, 0.3, you're going to get sort of, it's just going to push things more into shadow. So the edges of your um, shadows are going to have those detail shadows pushed into them. This is really useful if you want folds to be in shadow, but you want them to still potentially be lit fully if something is like directly lighting them so it lets you sort of have control over the um the way your model really looks a ton of models that you're going to see are going to have shadows just drawn right onto them and you can actually use this to replace those drawn on shadows and just have correctly colored shadows in your environment sort of always active on your model and the example you saw at the start was I was using this circular gradient and I just made the detail I think 50 by 50 and then it's going to push sort of it's going to push the edge into shadow and you're going to get this um, dotted look like you would see in some comic books a pretty cool little effect that you can use it is dependent on your model's UVs, so these are not going to be sort of the exact same size all over your model unless you really set the UVs up nicely. But that covers the natural lighting section, and I'm going to cover standard-ish and math lighting in a separate video because this video is long enough already. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.